Astroworld opened in 1968, part of a grand vision from Judge Roy Hoffines, wanting to bring Major League Baseball and a whole entertainment complex to Houston, Texas, all together called the Astro Domain. His vision was realized, and after Six Flags acquired the park, for a stretch of time in the 70s and 80s, Astroworld was one of the top parks in the country. Then, as Six Flags started changing hands and bad decisions were made, Astroworld fell by the wayside and closed down in 2005. If you're interested in the complete history of the park, check out my documentary. This tracks it from its origins, all the way until that final day when it shut its gates for the last time. Today, let's focus on the coasters. There were 12 that opened between 1969 and 1999, and today I want to rank them up and talk about what happened to each one. These are the coasters of Astroworld, from worst to best. Number 12, Swamp Buggy, A Chance Rides Toboggan, opened in 1970, closed in 1972. This was the first adult coaster the park ever had, opening two years into its history. And back in the 70s, these Chance Rides Toboggans were everywhere. 32 of them opened around the world, these portable rides having small enclosed cars. This one shows it's seated two across. That's different from the one at Little America. That can only handle one adult at a time. You climb an enclosed lift, spiraling down to the bottom, popping up into some hills and turns before the ride ends. If this is anything like the one at Little America, it's not very fun, it's jerky, and it can hurt your neck on those final hills. The shorter you are, the better off you are. It only lasted for two or three seasons, never to be heard from again. Number 11, Serpent, an aerodynamics mini mine train, opened in 1969, closed with the park in 2005. The aero mini mine train was pretty rare. Only four of them were built, three of them coming in 1969. It is what it sounds like a small version of their mine train coaster, only 810 feet long, reaching a top speed of 14 miles an hour, winding around a very nice setting, kinda using the terrain and weaving through the trees. This was the smallest coaster the park ever built, and they kept it around for the kids until the park's final day. Number 10, Mayan Mindbender, a Vacoma MK700, opened in 1995, close with the park in 2005. This was a relocation, coming from Canada's Bablo Island where it was also enclosed. And when it moved here in 1995, the park built a pyramid around it, gave it a Mayan theme, and they had a very nice borderline family, borderline thrill coaster. It's only 28 feet tall, has just over 1100 feet of track, and in the dark, I'm sure it seemed like it was going a lot faster than it actually was. After Astroworld closed, this was sent to Amarillo, Texas, reopening in 2009 at Wonderland as Hornet, and I've gotten to ride it a few times when I was there. You can see how compact it is. No real drop, just a bunch of twisted track winding down to the ground. Number 9, Excalibur, an aero mine train, opened in 1972, closed in 1998. I would say Excalibur was our first big real coaster, a custom mine train that did not use terrain like most mine trains do. It stood 88 feet tall, had a massive 80 foot drop into a downward helix, covering over 2600 feet of track. This was bigger, taller, and faster than most mine trains, but it was lacking in that great lower the ground setting. This opened as Dexter Freebish's electric roller ride, but in 1981, the whole front of the park got a retheme, going from the country fair to Nottingham Village, and that's when it got its new name. This was shut down in 1998, replaced by the SLC Serial Thriller, and it was sent north to Frontier City, sitting in storage for about six years before finally being scrapped. Number 8, Accelerate, an aero suspended coaster, opened in 1984, closed with the park in 2005. The aero suspended coaster was tried and failed at Kings Island, the bat lasting from 1981 to 1983. But by 1984, they had a new and better design, and two parks were willing to take a chance. One of them was Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and the other was Astroworld. Again, a lot of the coasters of this type ride their terrain, but Astroworld was built in a flat plot of land. It had two lift hills, 81 feet tall, 34 miles an hour, 3,000 feet of track, dipping and twisting down to the ground before going up another lift and doing it all again. The main selling point was having the car swing out on those turns, and during Fright Fest in 2002, the last four cars of the train were turned backwards. This was so popular, they kept it going all the way until the park closed in 2005. This was scrapped, and its trains were sent to Magic Mountain to be used on Ninja. Number 7, Serial Thriller, a Vacoma SLC, opened in 1999, closed with the park in 2005. The 12th and final coaster to be installed at the park, Serial Thriller took the place of Excalibur in the front. Kind of a weird fit for Nottingham Village, but this $10 million coaster would intimidate people coming to the park. 
This is your standard cookie cutter SLC, one of 27 in the world, 109 feet tall, 50 miles an hour, and five inversions. This had the original Vacoma trains, so here's the hoping it wasn't too jerky because those could be awful on your head. If it ran well during its early years, it had the potential to be a great ride. It was only six years old when the park shut down, so maybe it was still fine. This got moved to Great Escape and sat in an empty field for five years, eventually moving north and across the border, reopening as Ednor at La Ronde in 2010, still going strong to this day. Number 6. Batman the Escape, an intimate stand-up, opened in 1993, closed with the park in 2005. This coaster has been around the block, part of the old Six Flags ride rotation program, opening at Magic Mountain as Shockwave in 1986, moving to Great Adventure in 1990, and landing here in 1993 now using a Batman theme, and it would stay here for the last 12 years of its life. This was an Intamin stand-up, back when they did that kind of thing. Even though it looks like a B&M, Intamin used Giovanola as a subcontractor, and Bolger and Mabillard worked for them before splitting off on their own. This was 90 feet tall, had an 85 foot drop, 2300 feet of track, and just one inversion, a vertical loop. The rest of the track was just swooping turns, twisting around a compact plot. If this was anything like the early B&M stand-ups, like Vortex at Carowinds, I don't think I was missing out on a whole lot. This was moved to Darien Lake in 2006, sitting around for over a decade and finally scrapped in 2017. Number 5. Viper, a Schwarzkopf Looping Star, opened in 1989, closed with the park in 2005. Here is yet another coaster that didn't start at Astroworld. It was moved here from Six Flags St. Louis, opening as Jet Scream back in 1981. This was one of eight Schwarzkopf Looping Stars. If you want to ride the same thing, check out Silver Bullet at Frontier City. 80 feet tall, 48 miles an hour, just under 2,000 feet of track, and only one inversion, a vertical loop. And it would twist around its rectangle plot. This is a very portable coaster, and honestly, a very similar layout to Batman the Escape. I never rode this, but I have ridden Silver Bullet a bunch of times, and it's a very simple but very solid ride. Good forces of all kinds, positive, negative, laterals. And this one was defined by that tunnel on the first drop. That awesome cartoon viper looking like it was going to eat the train. When Astro World closed, this did not find a new home. Number 4. Grease Lightning, a Schwarzkopf shuttle loop, opened in 1978, closed with the park in 2005. After Six Flags took over in the mid-70s, Astro World was the envy of the coaster world. Part of that equation was Grease Lightning, one of the very first Schwarzkopf shuttle loops, using a flywheel launch to get the train up to 60 miles an hour into a massive 80-foot loop, up a 138-foot spike and doing it all backwards, finishing off with another big spike. No turns, just a straight line out and back. 13 of these were built, most of them are gone or have been refurbished, getting rid of that old-school flywheel launch in favor of a modern one. But there's something about that flywheel launch that just hits different. I've ridden Montezuma's Revenge at Knott's something like a hundred times and it was great. There's a reason this lasted at the park from 1978 all the way until its final day, being moved to Joyland in Lubbock, Texas in 2006, but it stayed in storage until 2018 when it was scrapped, the train going to the aforementioned Silver Bullet at Frontier City. Number 3. Ultra Twister, a Togo Ultra Twister, opened in 1990, closed with the park in 2005. Here's another ride rotation coaster, this opening at Great Adventure in 1986, ending up here in 1990, and it was the only Togo Ultra Twister to ever made it to the States. This is one of the most unique coasters ever built, and to think this existed in the 80s is kind of insane. It had a vertical lift at Great Adventure, reprofiled at Astroworld to 45 degrees, but it still had an 85 degree drop, going into a heartline roll. Then it stopped, the track would spit it out to the lower level, finishing its course backwards, going into two more heartline rolls. Light Grease Lightning, no turns, just a straight line. Some coasters ride on top of the track, some ride on the bottom or on the side, but this rides in the middle of the track. Rails all around you, going into extreme angles and wild twists. This is a bucket list coaster for me. This one's gone. It was moved to Six Flags America in 2006, but sat around until 2010 when it was scrapped. But there are still some in Japan, and I'd love to ride them next summer. Number 2. Texas Tornado, a Schwarzkopf Looper, opened in 1998, closed in 2000. In 1998, Astro World picked up yet another Schwarzkopf Looper, this one also being second-hand. This started on the German fair circuit, was sold to Sweden's Grönland in 1996, and by 1998 it found its new home right next to another Schwarzkopf Looper, Viper. So many coasters here have just that one vertical loop, but Texas Tornado had four, starting with a twisted 115-foot lift, 98-foot drop, 54-mile-an-hour top speed, almost 3,700 feet of track, and there was not an inch of straight track there. It was all swooping turns and loops, throwing in the occasional mid-course brake run. 
These compact Schwarzkopf multi-loopers are always popular. It opened as Taz's Texas Tornado, dropping Taz after the first season. And after the third season, it would be history. Moving on to Marine World in 2003 and going by the name Zonga. Apparently, the hot, humid days would affect the ride so much, it would cause it to shut down. Six Flags thought it would do better in a more mild climate, so they moved it to Northern California. It operated there for two years, moving to a park in Mexico in 2008, closing down for good in 2014. Number 1. Texas Cyclone, a frontier construction wooden coaster, opened in 1976, closed with the park in 2005. Of all the coasters at Astroworld, this is the one I most wish I could have ridden. This is one of many clones of the Coney Island Cyclone. You've seen them around. Cyclone at Magic Mountain, Georgia Cyclone at Over Georgia, Viper at Great America. But this one was apparently amazing. It was so good. Famous coaster enthusiast of the 1970s, Robert Cartmel, said this was his number one overall coaster. Better than the Beast. Better than every other coaster that was open through the 70s. Texas Cyclone was the king. I am a big fan of Viper, and it makes me wonder how great this really was. Just judging by its reputation, Texas Cyclone is the best coaster the park has ever seen. And too bad for all of us, it did not survive the park's closure. At that point, it had already put in 30 seasons and there was no interest in moving it. But, speaking of moving it, the original plans did not call for this to be a ground-up project. That was Plan B. Plan A was to buy the Coney Island Cyclone and relocate it here. Back in the early 70s, when the Cyclone was in danger of being torn down. The Cyclone lives on more than 50 years later, but the Texas Cyclone died with this park. The world losing a supposed top-shelf coaster. That's a wrap on every coaster that ever operated at Astroworld. Let me know what you think, what you would change around, and let me know of your experience at the park if you were able to go. This park closed down on my 18th birthday and I was never able to get there. But I did put together a complete history of the park last year. So if you want to see the park from start to finish, click the card above, or in my end screen, or the links below. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you're new here and want to see more content like this, please give me a sub. I have a playlist with other parks in this series. Also, check out my second channel where I post copyright free off ride footage, and my baseball channel if you're also a baseball fan. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.